Hey everybody, little Scotty Moss here. Hope you had a great holiday. Um, I uh, haven't done this for a while, so I figured I'd throw one in right now. Um, this is a very unusual and very rare uh, congenital heart defect. This is called truncus arteriosus. Um, I don't know, um, I didn't I think at the beginning of the series I told everybody that I've or had been doing this for about 33 years before I had to retire uh, due to some injuries, um, mainly repetitive motion injuries from doing echoes for so long. So uh, be careful when you're out there doing echoes or you'll end up like me, retired at 56. So anyhow, um, in that 33 years, I probably saw less than 10 of these. Um, so it's very rare. Um, now basically the truncus arteriosus is, is relatively a simple concept. Um, you always have a big VSD, um, which is obviously right here. So you can see that there. And uh, let's erase this. And what happens is the truncus is actually from here. Whoops, forgot to turn it on from here to here and what happens is instead of having a nice normal aorta come down here to a normal aortic valve which would be here you have one big valve going to both the aorta and the pulmonary artery and you can see that it's very uh, hold on a second let me get that back guys sorry about that um, still new at this program for some reason I can't catch certain things um, but anyways what you end up having is a very large one vessel um, system that comes off the heart and splits later on into the pulmonary artery which is here and it would go behind the superior vena cava over here and then there's the front part or top part of the VSD which is from here to here and then aortic flow goes that way so obviously you have increased significant mixing of blood I mean this is as mixed up as blood can be at this point <laughs> so um, this is one of those uh, defects that can be very difficult to fix because basically um, you can have a very wide aortic point here and you can have more than one leaflet and as a matter of fact one time I saw a, a six leaflet truncal valve up at uh, Loyola University in Chicago which is a big big place a lot of pediatric studies being done there and uh, those valves are usually insufficient now if you get lucky and you have you know one single valve then what they do uh, to repair this defect is they basically bring the oops hold on a second they bring the aorta down this way and they close off the VSD here and then they punch a conduit a little hole in the RV and they run it up this way sew it in and you have a flow from the RV to the PA then um, the only problem with this surgery one of the things that has to be done is you know it has to be done when they're a baby and then it'll have to be done when they're about five or six probably because they've grown so much maybe even a little bit later than that and then uh, when they're an adult so it's a three surgery um, it's a three surgery type of uh, defect so this is a significant one and it requires quite a bit of work I mean you're going to change this conduit on every surgery just to make it bigger so that they can get the blood flow to the lungs that they need obviously as the child grows the heart grows and the conduit does it and if the conduit doesn't grow then you need to replace it because it'll eventually get stenotic and you know because it's so small and then you've got a problem so 
Well, here's a drawing of that repair. Um, you can see the defect over here. And this procedure is called the Restelli um, procedure. Um, I don't know if you know this, but uh, a lot of doctors, when they invent a procedure, it's named after them. I don't know if that's an ego thing or if it's just a nice thing to do. I'm not sure. Obviously, Dr. Rastelli really knew what he was doing because he put together this operation. Now, um, I will try to show you some different aspects of truncal um, defects because they don't always attach in the same place. They can be where the um, split from the aorta to the PA can include both pulmonary arteries. They can include just, you know, one pulmonary artery where it's cut off and there's no connection to it and then it splits to the double artery. So um, I'm going to try to find some of those pictures and we'll show you this, but you can see the conduit here nicely demonstrated here how it's sewn in and everything and it, the new conduits all come with valves. So the valves help to keep the RV from getting big because of pulmonary um, hypertension because the valve leaks so bad. Um, years ago when they started doing this procedure um, there was no valve there so the blood would just kind of swish back and forth and the RV would start to dilate and you know the kids could have mild hypertension from it. Um, it's not something that's severe usually it's um, you know milder and it's mainly because the flow is overloaded in the RV so there's an increase in pressure. Um, anyhow uh, let's go on to some new photos. Okay so here we have a nice view of a truncal valve. You could see the three leaflets there um, and a split that starts um, you could see the VSD starts here about and goes down to here so this is all VSD and the valve is split so there's mixing of blood that's quite significant um, obviously you always have a little bit of richer you know this is rich oxygenated blood this is poorly oxygenated blood now when they mix together you're gonna get a you know you're gonna get an increase in the deoxygenated blood and a decrease in the oxygenated blood in the sense of percentages so that's just common that's what you know causes a kid to be discovered as a congenital heart defect is usually what happens is while they're feeding um, the child has to stop feeding um, quite often because they need to breathe and uh, you notice some bluing of the gums and uh, the lips will get blue and if it's bad enough sometimes the lower legs will start to model and get a little bit bluish color so that's especially with defects that involve the aorta so um, just showing you this picture and it has all the definitions and shows you all the different the or the, all the different vessels and and chambers here so that you get a good look at it okay I wanted to put this one in just because it has a much larger VSD um, which goes all the way up to you know up and through the main pulmonary artery and uh, to right to the uh, left and uh, right coronary or right um, pulmonary arteries so this would obviously be something that would be a little bit more difficult to handle um, the patch would have to go from here to here and then you would put a conduit in here. I'm sorry, the patch would have to go from here to here. So ignore that first uh, drawing. And then the conduit would go from here up to all the way up to this area here. And that would be how the lungs would be um, given back their deoxygenated blood so that they could oxygenate it and send it back. Um, anyhow, this is one of the different types of, you know, truncus arteriosus. I'm sure that there are different names for these, but I, I don't have them with me, and I don't remember what they were. I'm sorry about that, but 
you can always ask a Pete's cardiologist if they are named and if they are different types because depending upon where this area is will determine you know the surgical procedure and how vast it is ask and you shall receive as they say or someone said probably in the Bible not that I read that that often but this is Colette and Edwards classification of truncus arteriosus so these are two doctors who decided to classify these ty types of arteriosus so they made it simple for us by just naming it type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 4. And each one has its own component. Like here you can see that the defect, you still have a main pulmonary artery in type 1. In type 2, you just have the branches of the pulmonary artery coming off the aorta. Type 3, you have the branches coming a little bit lower off the aorta. And type 4, you'll have very stenotic branches. This is the worst one, obviously, to have. I'm just going to draw a circle around it so you can see the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery being very stenotic. And, and they're really coming off where the PDA should come off. So this is obviously a very urgent situation. You're going to have to do something with quickly. Um, Hopefully you can maybe put some conduits in where the left PA and the right PA are and then attach them to the conduit that would run from here to here. Um, obviously type 4 is bad. So, um, But that shows you the different ones. There is one other classification group. A couple other doctors did it too. Um, everybody has their own thing. It depends upon which one you want to use. Um, I don't think it really matters that much because the surgical procedure is pretty much the same for everyone. Um, occasionally you'll see where they will fix a, a VSD and you know uh, determine whether or not they need to put a conduit in or if they can you know sew in a uh, PA with the truncal valve. So it just depends upon how many leaflets there are and a bunch of other things so um, I've only seen that maybe once so it's very rare all right found the other guy um, so Colette and Edwards like we explained before um, it's drawn out a little bit differently but you know relatively the same concept um, and I like the fact that they do draw um, the type 4 and a little bit easier to deal with where the PAs come off this way and you would obviously just cut those off and attach them to the conduit. Um, but uh, Von Prague is the second one who has classified these. I'm not sure which order this came in. I think Colette and Edwards did it first and then Von Prague did it a second time. And the reason why Von Prague did it a second time is because if you look at some of these defects that he's seen, or she's seen, I'm not sure who Dr. Von Prague is, um, they look a little different um, and uh, it's you know just type 4 here looks a little bit different and this type 3 looks a little different because the right PA is lower than the left PA obviously the type 2 is about the same and the type 1 is about the same so it just is a matter of which one you use it and that's something you have to talk to the Pete's cardiologist about. Okay, last picture. This one, I, I don't know if the person drawing it did this on purpose or just accidental, but um, it's rare to see the truncal area be this small. Um, I'm sure it happens, but it's pretty rare to see that. And you can see the main PA comes off up here so that would be a relatively simple connection from you know up here you would connect and then you would connect down here and that's where the conduit would go and then you detach the VSD patch right here and then that basically corrects the flow and uh, you can go on with it there they obviously would sew this closed so you don't have any mixing of oxygenated blood going to the PA you don't need that pressure in there but this is uh, this is it this is 
kind of how truncus arteriosus works and like I said very complex and not something you'll see all the time um, very rare and uh, you'll be able to recognize it right away because like I said most of the time this truncal valve will be huge or truncal um, ascending truncus will be huge and you'll be able to tell right away that something's not right and the fact that you don't see the PA in the picture um, that's one of the other things um, you know and and as you go on you'll be able to you know once you see a defect you'll you'll know right away that there's something that is not correct that's when you go get the peds cardiologist let them figure out what's going on you just get the good pictures for them make sure they come up and you're there with the machine and they'll ask you well get this get that they may even take the transducer from you just to kind of get a good idea because these babies you know when they're born a lot of times they go right to surgery so you have to have someone who can really give the anatomy to a surgeon and uh, make sure it's correct because the surgeons let me tell you they hate surprises um, and they are cranky and nasty arrogant people most of the time if you're a surgeon sorry that's the way I saw it so anyhow I'll leave you with my favorite singer or one of my favorite singers David Lee Roth from Van Halen and a little joke so go ahead and read it and when you're done laugh and have a good day bye <laughs>